Hello, discrete math fans. Now we're going to talk about counting problems. Counting problems? What do you mean? One, two, three, four? Well, no. Let's give an example of a counting problem. Let's say you have a class of 26 students. There's 14 girls and 12 boys. And this class needs to select a committee for the school council. We're going to select three students to be on the committee but there's a restriction that says that we can't have all boys or all girls. How many ways are there for the class to select the committee? And this is going to be a pretty typical problem. By the end of this chapter, it's actually going to be pretty easy to solve this. We're also going to study probability, but we're going to do it in the context of counting problems. We'll talk about flipping coins or rolling dice. We're going to make an assumption about randomness. Now, we'll know what the possible outcomes of an experiment are, but we're not going to be able to predict which outcomes will occur. When you flip a coin, you're not going to know whether heads or tails will come up until after it happens. So you don't know what will come up. You cannot predict in advance what will happen. When you roll a 12-sided die, you know that one of the numbers from 1 to 12 will come up. You just don't know which. And in all of these examples, the possible outcomes are equally likely to occur. Let's make a definition to say that a sample space is the set of all possible outcomes of a random process or something that we'll call an experiment. And an event is a subset of a sample space. If you were really taking a class that dealt a lot more in probability, these concepts would come out to be much more important. We'll see them, but we're not going to make a big deal out of them. We're often going to have experiments where there are finitely many outcomes, and all of the outcomes are equally likely. Flipping coins, rolling dice, choosing students from a class of n students, these are good examples of outcomes equally likely outcomes. The probability of an event of a set of outcomes is just the ratio of the number of outcomes in the event to the total number of possible outcomes. So that's encapsulated in this theorem. This is the equally likely probability formula which says that if you have a finite sample space and all the outcomes are equally likely and if you have an, an event then the probability of that event is just the number of outcomes in E, the event, divided by the total number of outcomes in S. This assumes that all outcomes are equally likely. We're going to use the notation N of A to denote the number of elements in a set A. So we can rewrite the equally likely probability formula as this. The probability of E is the number of things in A divided by the number of things in S. All right, as an example, let's roll two four-sided dice. What is the probability of getting a sum of six? That is, when we add up the two dice, we get a sum of six. All right, so in our solution, we're going to make an assumption that the dice are different colors. Let's say that they're red and blue. Let's create a grid showing the 16 possible outcomes in our sample space. There are 16 possible outcomes because there's four ways that the red die can come up, four ways for the blue die can come up, so there's 16 possibilities. We'll see this later on using something called the multiplication rule. All right, this is the grid that shows all possible outcomes. Now, it's probably important for us to make a distinction between rolling a 3-1 and a 1-3. Those are different outcomes because the 3-1 is with the red die having a 3, whereas the 1-3, the blue die has the 3. So the entries in the table, it shows you what they mean. So the, if you go back to the table, the upper right hand corner shows a 1 on the red die, a 4 on the blue die. All right, so there are 16 possible outcomes in our sample space. Now let's go back to the table, and this time we're going to mark the outcomes that have a sum of 6. Alright, so that's what we've done here. 
we've put a box around the, the three outcomes where if you add up the two dice, you get six. So we could say that the event of getting a sum of six can be written like this. Two, four, three, two, four, two. That tells us that the probability that we get a sum of six on two four-sided dice is three sixteenths. Okay, that's all for now.